called Intel's last NUC the future of tiny desktops, and with this latest model, the Hades Canyon NUC, that's truer than ever. It has just about everything you'd want in a desktop, thanks to a single chip that houses Intel's 8th generation Core i7 CPU and AMD's RX Vega M GPU. This is one of the first devices to use that new hybrid processor, and it lives up to Intel's intention for the NUC, for it to be the next unit of computing. Combining that amount of CPU and GPU power in a machine this size would have been unthinkable a few years ago. And it's still incredibly impressive today. It's also the smallest VR-capable machine currently available. It's more than double the size and weight of the previous Skull Canyon NUC, with a similar design and LEDs that light up the front and prominent Skull logo. The bigger frame is worth it though, given how much power it holds, and it makes room for even more ports. On the front, it features an SD card slot, two traditional USB 3.0 ports, one of which can charge devices when the NUC is off, an HDMI port, USB-C, and a headphone jack. And it's even more impressive around the back, where there's four standard USB 3.0 ports, two Thunderbolt 3 capable USB-C connections, two mini display ports, two Ethernet jacks, an HDMI connection, and another headphone jack with optical out. That's more connectivity than you'll see on gaming laptops, and it rivals what you'd find on a typical desktop. Under the hood, which you can remove with just six screws, you've got easy access to all the internal ports. Like all of Intel's nooks, it's a bare bones box, so you'll have to buy your own RAM, storage, and OS to get going. That's a significant expense on top of the machine's $999 price tag, but it's within the price range of similar mini desktops. When it comes to performance, the Hades Canyon Nook didn't feel significantly different than the last model when it came to basic productivity tasks, but the difference was night and day once I loaded up some games. Doom 3 ran between 50 and 60 frames per second with high graphic settings in 1080p. Bumping the quality higher dipped the score to around 40 FPS, but that was still impressive. It also had no trouble keeping up with a fast-paced game like Overwatch, where I saw between 60 and 90 FPS in 1080p with ultra settings. In comparison, I had to run the last nook at 720p with low quality graphics to make Overwatch playable. I was also blown away by how well it handled Hellblade Senwa's Sacrifice, a cinematic indie game that really taxes the GPU. Even with very high settings, it ran between 30 and 40 FPS, which is still playable. Overall, the Hades Canyon nook proved to be a capable gaming machine. I was also surprised by how well it handled heat. The GPU hovered at a safe 55 Celsius as I was gaming. That's mostly due to the new closed-loop liquid cooler, which also helps to keep fan noise down. Finally, Intel has a nook that'll satisfy tinkerers and gamers alike. It's the sort of machine you can move around easily, especially if you prefer to game with a large desktop monitor instead of a small laptop display. Just keep in mind that you'll have to lug around the gigantic power adapter as well, which is almost as large as the computer itself. While the Hades Canyon nook is more of an experiment rather than a product meant for mainstream consumers, it's still groundbreaking. We've never seen such power in something so small. It's a sign that desktop computing is going to look very different in the next few years.